Welcome to Happy Clubhouse with a review of the Bandai SD Gundam World Heroes Wukong Impulse Gundam DX set, the first of two DX sets planned for release in this line with the other being the Sergeant Verde Buster DX set coming next month. To spoil a big surprise right here, this DX set really does mean DX set because it comes with the entire Wukong Impulse Gundam to the surprise of everyone and it's really kind of silly how Bandai never really made that a selling point. But anyway, there is already a review of the vanilla Wukong so make sure to go take a look at that if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's get started. The Wukong Impulse Gundam DX set was released on September 18, 2021 and it sold for a price of 1,540 yen. The lovely CG box art is still done by Mr. SK Yoshinobu, as is the entire SD Gundam World Heroes line. The box measures 31 by 19 by 8 centimeters, so it's shaped like a regular HG Kits' box this time. The short side of the box tells us that this is the ninth kit in the series, and uh, there's not much else new to report. The other side is exactly the same. The long side, of course, has shots of the different configurations that we get with the new parts. And the other side has some info on Wukong himself and a plug for the animation and all the legal text. You may have noticed that nowhere on the box does it tell us clearly that you actually get Wukong in this kit, unless you look for the usually tiny text that says that it isn't included inside the box, and that's a bit strange, isn't it? I suspect that this is a bit of a malicious design by Bandai, and now this is just my thought and it could very well just be that Bandai is really clumsy, but let's be real, they're never ever careless about telling us what's not in the box. I suspect they want us to think that the kit only has the add-on parts for two reasons. One is that they want you to buy a standalone Wukong by mistake because you kind of expect that you need one. The other reason is that the Wukong in here is actually better than the standalone one, and they still want people to buy the other one, you know, and maybe buy this one later as an upgrade to that kit. However you cut it, the way that it's unclear here on the box is careless at best and quite despicable at worst, and in this regard, I really have very little good things to say about it. All that aside, inside the box, we get Wukong spread across 7 runners, and the parts themselves are exactly the same as the standalone kit. The difference here is that the gold parts are now upgraded to this much nicer gold plastic rather than the slightly metallic yellow that we've gotten in all the previous kits in the line, which is absolutely something a lot of people would prefer. The actual new add-on parts come on three runners, so actually most of this kit's parts are actually Wukong himself rather than the new parts. We get a big sheet of foil stickers that have all the stickers from the original Wukong of course as you can see here, but they added quite a few new stickers on him and we're gonna look at those a little bit later. For the Jubai Jie silhouette form, or the pig form as I'm gonna call it from here on, we get red details right here for the front skirt add-on, then these red stickers go onto the rim of each of the new arms, then this sticker for the snout detail on the arm, and this wraparound one that matches up with that one. These red ones go a little bit higher up on the back of the arms. For the Shawu Jing silhouette form, which I'll call the monk form from here on, gets this gold sticker for the top of the head crest, then these gold highlights for a little bit lower down on the crest. Three stickers make up the gold colors on the front of each of the shoulders. Then the knees get two more gold details decorated with stickers. For the instructions, we get some info on all three new forms to this kit here on the front. On the back is the two-page comic that we get with all BB Senshi kits. Two other color pages are used for assembly instructions. And the last color page is a breakdown of all the different weapons and the different parts. The black and white side shows us that this is actually one big folded sheet, which is quite unusual for Bandai model kits. And all of this side is for the assembly instructions, as you'd expect. First up, here's the new Wukong before any stickers are applied. And side by side, it's not a very fair match for the old yellow plastic. Everything else on the kit is the same at this point, so if you have that kit, you know exactly what you're gonna get here. Next, we have the pig form with its gigantic arms. Whether it's a nicer gold or all that clear plastic, the kit looks this good already without any paint or any stickers or any modifications, and you'll see this throughout the entire kit with all the other parts. The new clear red parts mix well with the original clear red like on the feet, and they feel like they were always a part of the same kit. Then we have the monk form with the icy blue, and we need to zoom out a little bit because the top of the head is now just really tall. You'd think the blue would clash with the clear red, but there is enough of the blue that it becomes a dominant color here. Some Japanese fans have even mentioned that they actually prefer this form without the stickers and they just enjoy all the clear blue details. 
Lastly, we have the combined Coles and Co form, or maybe the Monkey King form here for convenience. Here, I left out this red head on forehead by mistake, and I couldn't reshoot it because later I put all the stickers on. Eh, whoops. Uh, but if you love clear plastic that's used on the SD World Heroes kits, then this is like that but taken to the extreme. And the clear color really is the main draw of the looks on this kit. But nice as it is, let's return to Wukong right here and then apply some stickers. And Wukong looks much more complete as you'd expect. Now first things first, I said this back in the standalone Wukong review. Another problem is that the stickers may look nice and golden, but they ironically make the muddy yellow imitated gold parts look dull and unattractive. The colors don't match up well, so I think Bandai should have picked a color that better matched the yellow, even if it means the color won't be as good looking on the stickers. The new gold certainly narrows the gap between plastic and sticker colors, but it's still kind of a mismatch. I mean, of course it'll never be perfect, and under more yellow lighting, this is good enough that you won't always notice it. A side-by-side -side with the standalone kit gives us an idea of how much nicer this DX Wukong is with the gold and the extra stickers. The new stickers are all for the lower torso, and you can pause this for a second to see if you can spot all the new stickers. So to start, the waist armor is now fully colored with stickers, which is a surprise since the old white ones didn't really look that out of place. The red parts right here on the side are certainly a nice addition and they look quite natural. But the gold part in the middle is both a clumsy wraparound sticker and it replaces all that real geometry with black lines. These stickers are quite hard to put on, so if you're gonna get this for a younger sibling or a child, then maybe you might want to give them a hand and spend some time on this kit together. The other new addition are the details on the clear leg down here, which is a more meaningful addition because the old leg was just all clear red, and the new stickers help us give this part a bit more meaningful complexity. But again, this is one of those stickers that cover up geometry with printed colors and black lines, so there is a bit of a trade-off. Overall, it's still hard to deny that the DX Wukong is just better in every way, because even if you don't like the new stickers, there's always a simple option to just not use them, and you still get the beautiful new gold plastic. If you don't happen to already have a Wukong, then this is definitely the version you'd want. Now if you already have one, then Bandai is banking on you begrudgingly getting this superior version as a replacement. I'd rather have them include the stickers and the gold runner and let you just modify an old kit and have this be less wasteful, but Bandai would much prefer you buy the whole kit twice. So to install the pig parts, we need to take off the front skirt and remove the white cloth bit at the top right here, and that frees up the socket to put in this new addition with the tusks on it. To take a quick look at the tusks themselves, the engineers were quite clever because from the back, they're actually entirely hollow, so you only get the front sides of them. But unless you're looking really hard, you really won't notice it too easily even though this is all clear plastic. Now for builders, this might be a bit more troublesome because if you want to fill it in, you're going to have to sacrifice the clear red texture. Anyway, this upgraded skirt goes back into the original spot like this, which gives Wukong a much thicker waist than before. And then we'll move up to the head and install this crown by pulling off this front section which is really stubborn and I'm afraid a lot of kids will break this at some point by mistake because it's actually a really bad design and it takes a lot of force to separate them. The front part goes onto the side of the head and you need to awkwardly put that back of the crown back on which risks breaking it a second time because of all that friction fighting you as you push them together. Now if you survive this step, then you'll need to pin it down in place with this clear red pig ear piece. Unfortunately, you need to do the same steps one more time for the other side, so the crown has to risk being broken once more. N that makes me not too confident that this crown part's gonna last very long for younger fans. Then we have the giant hands, which actually have the handles inside that goes right into the fist of Wukong, so he grips these directly. This manages to be both too tight and too loose at the same time. On the left hand, the grip is so loose that the big arm will routinely just come right off without even slipping. And this is true both for the DX hands and the regular Wukong hand that I have. However, on the right hand, this is so tight that you're gonna have a very tough time getting the hand back when you want to remove the big arm. And in case you think that it's good because at least it's gonna stay on tightly, both arms are way too big and they sit only on the wrist ball joints so they end up being a little bit floppy and it's not much fun to handle. All those complaints aside, we now have the completed pig form which certainly sells the idea of more power with the very big arms and those aggressive tusks. 
but it's sort of tempered by those really cute pig ears on the head. In an ideal setting, the arms add an entire segment of the arm that gives us great articulation. The big fists themselves can rotate as well on a single axis, and there's a hole in the center so you can still hold Wukong's staff if you really want. Another function here are the claws in the back, which you can deploy by turning the top armor around so the pointy side faces front. Now you might be a bit surprised to find that that's actually most of what the pig form has to offer because it doesn't have any handheld weapons and there aren't any other accessories. Now the pig form is still probably the most fun you're going to have in this set, even with the loose arms that's going to annoy you quite a lot. That being said, this is still far more interesting to look at for all the details than it is to play with, and it's better as a static display for builders who want to paint this, which is going to be a recurring theme for this kit. Returning to Wukong, to install the monk parts, we're going to add the crest on that head with this clear part plugging in the top of the head, which actually has a hole hidden away from the start for this purpose. Then the lower part plugs in horizontally onto the back to lock all the pieces together tightly. For the crown, we only need this piece right here on the right, and on it, we'll place this blue eye piece onto it. Then we'll use this gold nail piece to attach it onto the side of the head like this. The really big shoes are simply platforms that you plug right into the bottom of the feet with the connecting peg going into the heel. You might have to wedge the feet in a little bit to get a good fit, but the part stays on surprisingly well and they tend not to fall off by mistake. Next are the new shoulders which have pegs on the inside of them and they simply go right into the holes that are already on Wukong's own shoulders. Lastly, we have this set of really nice mala beads that look great when light hits the clear blue plastic. And surprisingly, the back sides of the beads are actually all hollowed out with holes on each of them. But just like the tusks on the pig form, you're never going to notice this from the front even though this is all clear. They fit onto the chest with two slots on the collar of Wukong and usually when they go in, they feel really sturdy. But this part will usually get knocked out of place and fall off when you handle the kit unfortunately. With that, we have the Sha Wu Jing silhouette or the monk form with all its stickers. And it's smart that the funky giant leg blades are balanced out with the shoulders that reach really far out on both sides, or else the shape of Wukong will really be thrown out of whack. Still, the focus will always be on those leg blades and how large they are. And the gold highlights here actually are a bit of a problem. So on the shoulders, they cover up the front as you'd expect from SD Gundam World Kits, but on the back, they can look quite barren because all that gold is missing. Then on the legs, the two sides have stickers, but then they have a gap on the spine here which isn't easy to see for others, but if it's you who built it, you'll always notice it and you're always going to see it. And while we're on problems, remember how I said the pig form was the most fun you're going to have in this entire set? Well I said that because this other monk form can't be posed. The culprits are partly the big blades up front, but actually way worse are the small ones at the back which I really think they should have just never put there. So a kicking pose like this is about as much as you can ever get out of this form, and this already needed me to take the legs apart and reassemble them bit by bit to get this one pose, and you can't just do this by turning the joints. For builders and older fans who want to display this kit, this won't be a problem at all. But this is still marketed to younger fans, and it's going to be a problem when there's nothing you can do to play with the kit. Kids are pretty smart, and they're going to figure this out right away that it just doesn't work as a toy. And what's going to happen? Well, they're going to toss it right back into the box and never play with it again, and that's not good. Uh, but it kind of gets worse as a toy. Remember the crown and how I said it's easy to break? For this form, we only use one piece on it. But if you want to go back to the pig form, you're going to have to take out this blue eyepiece. And the way it's curved means that you probably will snap this part right off when you try to tug the peg off. And this is on pretty tight. If you have this kit, make pretty sure to get something like a mechanical pencil right here and use a tip to push the peg from this side to get this part out. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure this piece is going to break. And I really wish I had nicer things to say about this form because it seems like I'm seeing a lot of bad things about it. But beyond the really interesting design, this form is quite hostile to young fans and I really think the designers should prioritize balancing this kit for play rather than just going overboard with a really extreme design. To have the Koz and Ko form with all the parts, there really is no big secret other than to put on everything from the two forms that we've already seen all at once because they don't actually get in the way of one another. Of course, don't forget to put the big monkey head on like I did at the start. 
Now the greatest thing about this form is how good it looks covered from head to toe with clear parts like this. You're paying close to 900 yen more for this kit and the price is enough to buy any two kits from the line, even the 770 yen ones. So at least all that extra money is put to work with all that clear plastic and the better gold color. And in this form is where it all shines the most. That being said, if what you see here doesn't impress you a lot, then there isn't much that the kit has to offer you because it can't do any poses at all. I wish I was speaking in hyperbole, but trust me, I really tried. And this is a static brick of a model. I'm, I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but this will be great for builders and older fans who will love this look on display, but it kind of sucks at being a toy. There really isn't much to add because this is quite literally just all the previous parts put on all at once, with them blocking each other from moving at all. For size comparisons, here's the SD Cross Silhouette RX78. And then here's the Legends BB Zakuto. By himself, the fully dressed up Wukong seems really big, but he's actually not that massive next to the other SD kits. He's about as tall as they are, but he's also only about as wide as Zakuto with all his armor, only that on our kit, the details are really dense and the clear parts really scream for attention next to the other kits. So in size, it still fits nicely with the other kits, as always. In style, it will make the other kits look a little plain in comparison, which means the Wukong is doing his job right. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai SD Gundam World Heroes Wukong Impulse Gundam DX set. Number 1. It's not suitable for its target audience. This kit is already very well loved by model fans, if Twitter has anything to say about it, so there's no question that this design is one that a lot of fans love. Now the problem here is that this kit has some fatal problems that makes it not suitable for the 8 year old fans as this claims to be for on the box. The designer should be much more careful about what they ask fans to do with the model kit, because younger fans should really only be expected to work with their hands most of the time, and not be asked to figure out what tools to use to not break a kit. I know no one who watches my channel are that young, but I think most of you would agree that we don't want a cool kit if it comes at the expense of making younger fans frustrated and sad, and this kit just really misses that mark. But number two, it's really exciting for builders. Yeah, the flip side of that coin is that this kit is really exciting to paint and decorate. All the flaws I mentioned are almost universally irrelevant or just requires a small dab of glue or a bit of paint. And this is a unique kit that works mainly in clear colors in an eye-catching mix of red and blue. It's really not a design you can easily find, so that should be really interesting to a lot of builders. And number 3, it has a superior Wukong. The add-on parts aside, this set does have a Wukong that's superior in every way to the retail one. I mean sure, the pig and the monk parts are a little bit contentious, but Wukong himself is clearly better than the standalone kit and there's just no contest here. So one of the best parts of this kit is the better Wukong, so long as you don't mind paying a little bit extra. I kinda wish Bandai would just tell people all of this was in the box rather than just keep it so foggy. But since they won't do that, the next best thing is for me to tell you right here, so now you can properly decide if this DX set is worth your while. So that's a review of Wukong's DX set. It's a good kit with a lot of merits, but it's not enough for the fans it's meant to serve the most. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates and upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang on here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.